Hello fellow woodworkers and welcome to this week's edition of the Garage Workshop. This week we're going to be making a, a new and much improved router insert for my table saw. <coughs> Roll the intro. So the first thing I did uh, in this project was select a piece of wood and this was where I made my first mistake as you'll find out later. I went for a piece of that recycled kitchen unit um, but mostly because it had smooth uh, sides which I thought would be really useful. Uh, the second thing was I opened the table saw up um, just to measure the gaps. I think when I did this the first time uh, I didn't do a brilliant job to be honest with you and I don't think I got the measurements quite right but this time I was determined to get everything right. So when I got the measurements, I first of all wanted to uh, level up this piece of wood um, and just take a couple of cuts off of the uh, edge just to get it, um, get rid of, basically get rid of that horrible uh, groove that was on the side. So I just put it through the table saw. Please note, I'm not wearing gloves. Thank you for all of the comments about wearing gloves using a table, uh, wearing, wearing gloves using a table saw. So I ran it through and as you can see I just took off that groove and that groove was, uh, this is the leftover front of the tambour failure, which is what I thought this project was going to be. But don't worry if you are watching, it does all come good in the end. So when I did that I just took off the last part of the groove that was at the bottom because obviously this piece of wood that was the top previously and I knew then I also had straight edges all the way around which I know I had before but I wanted to make sure it was absolutely perfect. Then I measured the piece of wood and got it exactly in half and I ran it back through the table saw to get the piece that was exactly the correct width for the gap you can see there. So, so far so good, uh, no real issues at this point and as you can see the piece of wood fits perfectly. I deliberately left it long so that I could uh, cut the end off which I uh, did. I lost the footage for that some. How? I don't know how, but uh, I then marked it up, took the one edge off, and then I put this back through um, the mitre saw just to take that off, and it sort of took that broken corner off pretty much. So I knew I needed to uh, level out that little gap, so I got an off cut of uh, plywood that I had lying around the workshop, which was strangely enough exactly uh, the right thickness. So I just put it on the table saw and I cut two sort of strips level exactly the size that I would need and the plan was just to stick one of these on either end of the wood just to sort of lift it up a bit if you see what I mean. I was very careful marking these and I wanted to make sure that I got them absolutely uh, bang on the right size. With this project I was trying to make everything as good quality uh, as I can. So when I've got the size and I've got the piece of uh, wood the correct um, way round, I just took the end off and then I ran it back through um, the mitre saw getting it exactly the right width which was, uh, I think memory serves me, it was 13.2 I think was just the exact uh, width of those pieces of wood. I just used uh, super glue to stick them down uh, put them on, put them in clamps, and I was pleased that when they came out they'd stuck absolutely rock solid. It then came to me that I could put a sort of end that wedges between uh, the bar and the rail on the table saw. So I cut a piece of uh, scrap 12 mil sort of hardwood I had lying around, and the plan was to drill and screw it to the end so it could just fit in that gap you can see by my left hand there, and then do the same on the other side. Uh, but inside the gap, if you see what I mean. So it was sort of wedged between the two. So I just used the off cut and I pre-drilled all of the holes. I pre-drilled the holes here and I also pre-drilled the holes in the wood. I actually went quite deep because I was really worried about the wood splitting. So I put it in a little bit deeper than I would normally do. Just bear that in mind for later on. So when I'd done that, I screwed the three together. And at this point, I didn't notice the second issue um, which was the wood splitting. You'll see uh, in a bit, but the wood had completely split on one side and even though I just looked at it, I didn't notice. Rather than pocket holes, I uh, just added these two little hinges. These are from the uh, Parkside 
uh, range. They're in one of my Parkside uh, tool reviews, just sets of little hinges. These are really tiny, these ones, and the perfect size for this job. So I just add them on, pre-drilled and screwed them in. At this point, I offered it up, and as you can see, it worked absolutely perfectly. The back bit held, the front bit held. So the next thing to do was to find the center for the actual plate, face plate. Uh, when I found the center, I just uh, drew around it a few times, and then it was time to break out the router. I made sure it was the correct depth, uh, which luckily it was. And then I use a Forstner bit just to get a starting point uh, for the router. There's lots and lots and lots of routing uh, coming up. This is my uh, first project using my uh, Katsu uh, router, which um, I'll put a link to the review I did. And I really liked how well it went through, but at this point I was already beginning to get some concerns about the wood, and I was right in those concerns. And you'll see why I have those concerns in a second. Okay, so you will have just seen me um, hollowing out uh, this piece of wood and uh, a couple of things. Number one, hopefully uh, you can see that. It is incredibly <laughs> rough, not a very good job at all, but there are two things, two really important things that I've noticed. Uh, the first one is uh, this. The wood has actually split where I was uh, chiseling it and it would be possible to put it back potentially but it's actually broken in more than one place uh, so that is obviously a really really uh, big mistake and also I didn't realize on the side here uh, I think you should be able to see that where I put that last screw in despite the fact I pre-drilled the holes um, the wood has split I actually think this is the worst possible choice of wood and to be honest I only really picked it because I wanted this um, very slippery uh, surface but I really think this was a really poor uh, choice of wood to start with so what I'm gonna do now is take a trip to my local DIY store and I'm gonna go for a bigger piece of wood a thicker piece of wood perhaps a piece of pine but a solid piece of wood as opposed to this because every time I've made this project I've either used this or I've used plywood and none of the wood that I've used really I think is correct so I'm gonna go and get a piece of probably some um, smooth sawn timber something like that so let's go and do that now so I won't name the store but I'm sure you can work out what it was um, I did get some funny looks filming this but I made my way through to the outdoor section where they keep the indoor wood yes you heard that correction correctly this is the outdoor section where they keep indoor wood and I decided on a width, uh, which you'll see in a minute, I think it was 131 mil, it's just over 13 centimetres. But took a couple of goes and eventually I found a straight bit and then I just went to the checkout and paid for it. Also, just so you'll see some offcuts from the offcut pile. I think I pay £1.75 for those, so absolutely fantastic bargain. Okay, so uh, this is the piece of wood you would have just seen me uh, buying. It's probably a bit thicker uh, than it needs to be, a bit too thick for this job, I think. But what that is going to do is allow me to put some grooves in it so that when I sit it on the table saw, the two arms that extend the uh, table um, will actually be able to go be completely sunk into here. So that will, A, give me more um, security and less movement for the wood to move through because obviously it will be sort of hung over. But what I have got to be careful of is the guide, the rail guides at either end, the measuring guides that I slide the fence up and down because I can't go over that. So I'm going to cut this out to be exactly the same size. It's, it's a piece of smooth planed timber. Uh, it's 130 mil and it's 131 mil, so it's just over 13 centimeters by about 2.8, which I know is too thick. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut it down to size. Let's lay it on the top and then let's see how much of the groove we need to cut out. Let's do that now. So I firstly uh, re-measured just to make sure I'd got my uh, measurements exactly uh, correct. And then I cut the wood in my mitre saw. Now, I'm going to run this recording uh, without me talking because I had my first kickback that was actually recorded. I don't know why, but you'll see it for yourself.
Hard to see on film, but that was quite the kickback. And as you can see, there's a little burn mark on the edge there. So I offered it up. It fitted absolutely perfectly. So I did the same thing I did earlier. I used my measuring gauge to get the right measurement. And then I just scored and then filled in with pencil the bit that I wanted to uh, sort of channel out. And then I went back to the router to get those bits out. I just wanted to sort of visually check it. You can see I'm just making the lines a bit thicker then. I ran the router through and I'm very, very pleased to say it went straight through the wood, which I was worried about. Um, there was no need. All I had to do was tidy it up um, with some sandpaper because it was a bit rough, but it went through no problem. I offered it back up and it fitted just the right width. It was perfect. So then I went back and I did the other side of the wood. Some, I think it must have slipped here because it looks a bit a different size on the top and bottom, but a little bit of moving and jiggering around and it worked perfectly. A bit more sanding. Uh, this one, I know it looks like it's not cut right, but just ignore that pencil line. That was the wrong size. So sanded it down. Then I just got out the chisel just to remove, remove a couple of lumps uh, that were left in it. After that, perfect. I offered it back up and it fitted on both sides, which I was really, really pleased about. The next thing I did was uh, find the centre of the piece of wood. I found it the centre sort of top and bottom and I had a little cross in the middle um, which gave me a starting point to line up with the marks inside my router faceplate as you can see there. Now here I did something slightly different to the first time. I put the screw holes in because the plan wasn't to uh, route throughout the entire middle. It was to just route the edge and cut the rest out. So I drew a sort of faceplate shape within the faceplate shape, which I thought would be the best way of doing it. Uh, I then set the router up, I put the drill in just to get the route of it started, because I did this in one pass, I didn't do multiple passes, I had it the right depth, so that's why I used the drill bit and drilled the hole to start with, because I, I didn't want to waste time, you know, doing multiple passes, and I was really pleased and very impressed with how uh, straight that hole was, because a lot of this I had to do sort of by eye. Um, I did use this piece of wood, it was an off-cut from the off-cut, uh, I put that in um, just to sort of give it a bit of something to stick on, um, my hose kept falling out, that, that adapter I've got is not really very good, I'll have to make another one. So when I did that I just tidied it up again with a block of sanding paper and I was ready for the next stage. So having cut a little hole, um, I just put the jigsaw in to cut out that sort of middle uh, piece, if you can see what I mean. Um, I took it, started off on one end, then I went along the side, and actually I freehanded this, but I did a pretty good job. There's just a little bit left, which I took out with a chisel, which you'll see in a minute, but I'm getting much better with my jigsawing. This is a really cheap, basic supermarket jigsaw as well, but it's really good. So when it was finished, I just knocked off the couple of little bits with a chisel, and it was actually relatively flat. I was really impressed. And of course, the faceplate fitted uh, a little bit rough on some edges. I get that, but I can easily fill that with some wood filler. I then got out the um, drill and just started off um, the hooks. So I found it was a little bit lower. So I just put a washer in just to raise it a little bit. It was only about a mil or so. And then I used the screws that came with the faceplate pack. Uh, they all went in, in fact they actually broke the surface a little bit so I just have to be careful of that one and moving it. The next thing I did was offer it up and it fitted perfectly. Uh, I just undid the bolts and I really squidged it in to see if it would move and it didn't. So next I fitted the actual uh, router and it did fit perfectly. I bought this face plate specifically to fit this router and it fitted like a glove. I was really pleased. Uh, I then put the in. The only thing here is I couldn't fit both screws in because the router was blocking it. Then I gave it a test and it worked a treat. Look at that groove. Absolutely perfect. I was really, really pleased with that. There's my very pleased face. Okay, so the project is finished. And what are my thoughts on my uh, insert, router insert for my table saw? So, well, as you saw earlier, I thought this was going to be another failure video like the timbre cupboard was, but I am really pleased with how this has looked. It is a bit rough and ready. There are some gaps in and around the wood, which I'm not ma massively happy about, but I can easily fill those gaps. That's not an issue at all. The best thing is it's actually flush with 
the piece of wood. It was much better to use a solid piece of wood than the sort of chipboardy uh, kitchen unit I was using before. And as you saw, it works, which is the most important thing. Now, there are things I would probably change about it. It is slightly lifted up from the table below, but I've got a way around that. I think I'm gonna drill through this unit here, this uh, black strip of metal, and drill in to use it. But the best thing is I've now got a functional router insert for my table saw, meaning I can use the fence and I can now start doing some proper routering projects, which is the entire reason of doing it. So if I'm being honest, how happy out of 10 am I? I'm gonna say it's a solid seven. It does everything I wanted it to do. And the most important thing is it's level. And whenever you're using a router table, that's the most important thing that it stays level. So really, really pleased overall. And after what was gonna be a failure, nice to see I managed to pull it round. If this is your first time at the Garage Workshop, thank you very much for dropping by and watching the video. Please can I ask you to subscribe, like, and comment. I'm getting up to close to 350 subscribers at the time of this video. And your feedback is really important to me. And also, if there's anything you'd like to see me do in the future, please let me know. If you are a regular viewer, thank you so much. My views and videos are getting about 200 views uh, each one, which is absolutely fantastic. Please don't forget to like, comment, and of course, have a fantastic week. I will see you next week. Have a great one, fellow woodworkers. Take care.